right? So namaste everyone. Um, this book series, today's session is being brought to you by the Indology Academy. And uh, we have uh, Professor Vaidyanathan with us. He actually has a very interesting career and is still <laughs> very active. Um, graduate of Loyola College from Madras. His master's is from the Indian Statistical Institute in Calcutta. And his doctorate degree is from the Indian Institute of Management, also Calcutta, where he first, I think, began teaching. He's taught there for about four years or so. And then um, he has been a Fulbright Scholar twice, uh, visiting faculty in various universities, including the West, so USA and UK. Um, he is now a retired professor of uh, finance from IIM Bangalore, but he continues to serve as a consultant and is on many boards of many corporations. And he still, um, as a faculty, as an academic, uh, keeps contributing. So he's a Cho Ramaswamy Chair Professor in Public Policy at Shastra University, the, um, based in San George, Tamil Nadu, and also um, Emeritus Adjunct Professor um, at Rashtriya Raksha University, which is um, located in Ahmedabad. So a very hearty welcome to you, sir. And today he will be talking about his latest book, which has been supremely well-received in the market. Um, the title is Cast as Social Capital. So I turn it over to you, sir. Welcome. Well, thank you very much, uh, uh, Kanojia. Yes. And uh, of course, for people in uh, your side of the world, it's good morning and uh, my side of the world, it's good night. And in between there could be good afternoons and wherever you are located, right? I'm uh, really delighted and happy that uh, you wanted to organize this. And uh, this is uh, basically, you know, out of the book, I'm sure you have mentioned already in your uh, discussion. And we would uh, uh, look at the cast, cast of course, Whenever the word cast is mentioned, immediately it is treated as a four-letter word. And, uh, you know, even though it is five letters, and uh, so you are, you know, uh, do not, uh, people are very uh, reluctant. And, and it is used, it's something very fascinating. On a day-to-day -day basis, it is used. It is used for marriage. It is used for childbirth. It is used for death. It is used for hundred other things. It is used in politics, it is used for voting, it is used for school admission, college admission, uh, jobs, everywhere. But at the same time, people are very uncomfortable and they say, no, 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 we are, uh, I think, uh, the utter hypocrisy of the highest order, I would rather say. And uh, some people even talk about, we have to establish a costless system and other things. Anyhow, uh, we are like that only, so it's okay. First and foremost is something you know very simple I would like to mention. The caste hierarchy was created in 1881. Believe me, we had caste, always had caste. There is absolutely no denial of that. But this ABCD in terms of hierarchy, you know, number one, number two, and this was by the British in 1881 census. Prior to that, I have done, uh, I have also contacted a lot of historians and sociologists. There is no hierarchy available neatly, except to one Purusha Sukta Sloga. They always say, you know, that uh, Brahmins come from the head and uh, uh, the Kshatriyas came from the ha, you know, chest portion and uh, Vaishyas from the um, trunk and shudras from the uh, feet. That's the only thing which uh, according and this also I am not very sure can be classified as hierarchy because the feet is not considered as something very low order or anything. For instance, when you go to a Vaishnava temple in India anywhere, even abroad, uh, you are given a you are one crown type of thing, sabari we call it. It's actually the feet of the Lord, actually. Uh, Worshipping the feet of the Lord is a very common thing, actually. In uh, many households, you will find uh, uh, copper or uh, gold or whatever. The feet of the Lord is kept. What I want to say is that's not a very conclusive type of a uh, thing. 
the fundamentally <coughs> this hierarchy came about in 1881 first census that was the first census done by in india actually prior to that we don't have any uh, census and very interesting uh, this also is uh, very fascinating people talk about uh, caste caste discrimination this and that in the written history of india written by marxist quote and quote very important there is no caste wars at all there has never been you know kurmi is fighting yadav yadav fighting kiori kiori fighting they caste wars were not there primarily some wars were there for expansion of the kingdom that's all not uh, related to any particular uh, caste second is very important very time in all our hari we forget it indian civilization is the only civilization which did not have slavery as part of its ethos we never had slavery the arabians had the the uh, what one can call the, uh, the europeans of course everybody knows had we never had the slavery so this is something very and uh, a large number of people were trying to reform you know uh, any number of people you can quote were trying to and uh, people who were uh, rooted to the uh, the soil rooted to the sanatan dharm they were able to succeed much more in um, bringing about changes and other things than the outsider or rather what you may loosely call people who are not uh, uh, very much uh, uh, rooted to the uh, ethos of the system the very something very interesting people who are very rooted like uh, let, latest example is uh, mahatma gandhi actually he is very rooted to the uh, system nobody can accuse him of uh, being a uh, not a uh, sanadani and uh, but he could bring about uh, more changes than those who are outside and criticizing it and other thing anyhow and there were large number of uh, groups at various points of time wanting to abolish caste and uh, nothing like that came even gandhi ji's time caste is accepted the only thing is there uh, the the issue of discrimination based on certain practices and other thing we will come to that okay so the first census had 1929 caste 1929 caste listed and uh, there were many uh, which had a population of less than 1000 and 275 caste had one member only large number of one member caste in other word in set theoretic language there is a singleton one fellow only claimed he belong to one caste actually in the olden days very interesting uh, the uh, desegregation disaggregation disaggregation or uh, you know red reduction in terms of uh, thing was very common division in terms of caste sub caste sub sub caste sub 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 caste and other but if you come to the modern times post uh, independence and uh, because of electoral issues there is an aggregation is taking place this is a very important thing which we should recognize for instance there are hold your breath 404 jat sub caste recognized listed and there is sub sub caste and other thing and many of them don't intermarry exogamous endogamous all that we will not go into but a new category called jat has come into be if you go back in history some uh, uh, 50 year before there was nothing called jat similarly tevars they were kallar they were uh, maravars and uh, they were agamudiyar they are called suddenly one uh, tevar caste has come in the last uh, say 20 years or 30 years everybody trying to identify so there is an aggregation taking place also this aggregation is mainly political in nature because the larger numbers are always helpful in a democracy where one man one vote so you say that all jats should need to vote in this way and everybody is very happy because the cluster is very large as you can accommodate so there is a but this lesser number british were very unhappy so what they did which i according to me single major 
crime committed by the Britishers in India is, they told in 1891 census, the enumerators are told, you decide the caste of the person. Nowhere in the world this would be accepted as a good form of uh, uh, census or counting. But they told, because they wanted everybody to be uh, put into some uh, of the four. Why four much later in a light-hearted way in uh, uh, 2000, uh, sorry, in uh, 1991 census later, commissioner was telling, we had in Britain the fourfold category of senior civil servants, officers, clerks, and peons. So we wanted to create a mirror image of ourselves in India. So we thought this fourfold is a very good uh, categorization. So the enumerators began to decide what should be the. In other words, if a person is having a tuft, then there is the Brahmin. If a person is slightly more the mustache and uh, <coughs> uh, look very aggressive, he was put as uh, Kshatriya. And if a person is very meek and weak and other thing, it was, this is all, you know, the whole thing was uh, chaotic actually. But the British were very happy about it. And that is how it went on from 1891 till 1931. 1931 is the last census of caste we have got in India. 1931. After that, 41 census was not conducted uh, adequately or properly because of the war, uh, Second World War. And 51 onwards, there was no caste census. And uh, because uh, Nehru declared that we will become a casteless society, so there is no caste census, except uh, asking for the listed communities, SCSTs as they are called, that's all. So 1931 is the last caste census available with us. That was the basis on which Mondal Commission in 1883 <laughs> gave its decision regarding reservation. We have a very fascinating country actually. We use, you know, uh, sometimes non-existent data or sometimes very old data. And this uh, example is interesting. 1931 data was used in 83 to decide that OBC should get uh, uh, so much percentage. And uh, obviously later Supreme Court judgment that it should not exceed 50% was there, where it was more breached. We will come to that. Anyhow, so that is a uh, history of our... In 2011, there was a clamor that the caste should be enumerated. Even now, there is a clamor by some parties in Bihar and other places that you should. Uh, and it's a very, uh, the census commissioner in 2011 mentioned it is going to be messy. We will not like to do it because it's not an easy task to identify caste and other thing. That time, Chidambaram was the uh, minister in charge, home ministry, it comes into it was decided it will be done as an additional supplementary, not part of the census itself. So 2011, they uh, collected data and uh, it's very, very interesting. And uh, different people understand different things by caste. That itself is we should, uh, you ask a fellow to which caste he belong <laughs> and, uh, and his uh, wife in his absence. And they may say two different things. So that's something which uh, is not understood at all in India. Anyhow, <clears throat> the exercise uh, of uh, 2011 was a very, very major exercise. But unfortunately, they had something like uh, 4.6 million caste entries. Of uh, 330 million households, according to them, 330 million household, all, you know, three member household, two member household, all type of house. Which means 82 household per one cast. That was really a uh, chaotic type, one can say. And uh, more than 70,000 were not clear at all to what is the exact cast which is being identified. It's not a spelling mistake or anything. It's more a question of People identifying themselves with a the particular, many people identify with sub, 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 sub caste, which is not uh, uh, clearly understood by many people. They think that, you know, one uh, homogeneous type of thing. Anyhow, this whole thing has been given to Niti Ayog at that time, who I think I'm sure they have put it into one uh, huge uh, storage space. 
and uh, kept it. I don't think they are going to uh, come out uh, to rectify all these uh, 67 million. Uh, there has been another attempt. A couple of attempts have been done. One is by Karnataka. Karnataka government has been reasonably, I would say, collecting information on uh, among many state government on the socio-economic and other issues. Tamil Nadu also used to do it. Karnataka in 2017 did a uh, uh, cost census uh, along with uh, you know their socio-economic sense. So they do it periodically to assess about the benefits who should be getting and other things. So, and that has been put into a much stronger storage and locked. And there is periodically the demand that it should be released and other things. It appears, according to the reports leaked, Dalits and Muslims outnumber now Linkayat and Okaligas. And they seem to have something like 20% population, SC. And uh, Muslims are 17%, which means 37%. And if you add other smaller groups, it will be 40%. The, the conventional wisdom is uh, Lenkais are the largest uh, proportion. They were assigned always 18 to 19%, but it appears actually they don't come more than 13%. Huge demographic changes have taken place in the country in terms of two child and you know, various other things. Anyhow, so this uh, 2017 Karnataka census is in the uh, what one may loosely call in the freezer. And off and on, some party will demand it should be released. And some others will uh, say keep quiet type of thing. And uh, it's going on. So because uh, Obviously, everybody thinks it's going to open up a Pandora's box if you release it. For instance, uh, Okaligas or Gaudas, to which Devagoda uh, belongs actually, it appears they are less than 10%. They always used to claim 12%. And uh, one important thing, kindly remember, all this uh, data on caste and other things are all bunkum. I call it POTA data, pulled out of thin air, P-O-T-A. And uh, in a television discussion, I remember somebody was telling in a, this NEO Yadavs constitute 60% uh, of this constituency. And so at the end of it, I asked him, where from you got this number? He told Professor that uh, anchor is a Yadav. And uh, so I do not want to hurt him. And general, you know, general wisdom is Yadavs are very dominant here. Yeah? So I told, this is what is uh, I can tell you. There is no exact numbers or anything available on this uh, score. And uh, more important is each caste subcaste is a sampradaya. This we should recognize. It is not something, you know, uh, and uh, dealing with birth. Different caste have got different type of, different subcaste have got different type of. Some prepare the kundli on the day of the birth itself. Some they don't do it. They do it after one year. Naming, Namagaran, some do it after 10 days. You will be surprised, some do it after one year. But they choose the name. They register nowadays with the modern uh, thing. And uh, Mundagan, again, you know, doing uh, what you may call shaving the head. Not all do it uh, at the identical times. Different time, different. Uh, as <laughs> once I was <laughs> in a discussion, somebody asked the government should have a common regulation. I told don't do that because the, you won't be able to get barbers at the same time for all the people. You know, these are all just similarly betrothal, marriage, and childbirth, women uh, treatment, and uh, different uh, ages like 60s, 80s, and other things, celebration. Some caste death and ceremony, some caste have up to 13 days. On the 13th day, they uh, call it by some Sam, Samaradhana or various names. You know. Some have gone to only for six days. And some Hindu caste bury their uh, people. Not all of them burn. 90% burn, but some of them bury, actually. So, you know, the food habits, dress habits, most of the Hindu caste do not uh, consume uh, this uh, cow beef. Generally, 
but they take other uh, chicken uh, fish and other. for instance the so called uh, quote and uh, unquote upper caste in coastal areas they consume fish they which you know in bengal as well as in kerala and other thing but the interiors they don't consume fish some of the upper caste consume egg and uh, poultry and other thing that is not considered as uh, non vegetarian anyhow there is a range of uh, practices because some of the jains for instance who are very considering themselves for the tax they would not uh, think of even consuming egg and some of them don't even take uh, milk and associated some uh, don't take ice cream some of the you know it's a very it's not a very simple uh, sort of uh, linear you know sort of you know you draw the thing and it's a it's a multiple clusters with a lot of intersections and <laughs> so there is a huge amount of uh, sampradayas it's not uh, something to be easily uh, closing the eye or anything now economic census nss we have got they do a very regular uh, comprehensive census of the that's a central statistical organization they conducted <clears throat> 1998 2005 to 2013 2017 18 is said to be released because of pandemic and other thing you find it very interesting 2005 they conducted that covered something like uh, uh, you know 35 uh, million enter by enterprise they mean any activity which is productive and which is uh, uh, delivering you cash not free that's all any any activity it can be a, a street side uh, dosa maker or it can be uh, you know mukesh ambani it doesn't matter any activity so this comes to something like uh, 35 million in uh, 1998 i have some uh, uh, quick uh, data in 98 they found the obc scst they owned 44% of the enterprises the ownership of enterprises and in 2005 it was uh, uh, the total number was much higher it was not 35 million it was actually of the order of uh, 2005 42 million and uh, 2013 uh, it was of the order of 61 million okay so 2005 the share of obc scst is 51% earlier i told you it was 45% 98 to 5 and uh, in 2013 it is nearly 60% in other words you find huge amount of uh, um, scst obcs are becoming owners of some sort of enterprises maybe a small uh, dukan maybe a small uh, uh you know uh, restaurant may be a small but still entrepreneurship is there and of that uh, sc and st itself constitute around 20% so it's a very and obcs are become significantly involved in commerce and business traditionally many of them were agriculturists they have moved out of agriculture into this it's a very Uh, there is another interesting book which has come out by the grandson of uh, ems nambudiri bard one of the founders of the communist party of india marxist in india is uh, harish damodar and his name is about new capitalist class in india he discusses about uh, how people from agriculture side has gone into business and commerce how people in the scribal you know traditionally who are chitragupta or whatever you may loosely call uh, the type of uh, you know government bureaucrats and the various other uh, type of thing uh, the upper caste and various caste and various group how they have all gone into it uh, sector so the new type of uh, capitalist yes explained it will be of interest to people who are uh, you know more interesting about this now couple of observation a large number of these uh, enterprises we were talking about as i as uh, 90% they 
do not use the institutional finance it's a very large percentage actually in spite of so much development so much of uh, banking and other thing so many of them still depend on own financing uh, financing in by the relatives or financing by the caste groups financing by the caste group can also be money lenders one of the important factors is lesser amount of paperwork one practically no paperwork and uh, with uh, maybe a bangal or a you know uh, mangal sutra or not the original one but uh, equivalent of chain or something as a mortgage they get the funds and uh, more important is npa is lesser non performing asset or what is called uh, there is no much of default because of the caste pressure the sub caste pressure in the local area and uh, it is also related to what is called the caste izzat you know we you know i, I how can i be a, a person who doesn't repay uh, born out of this particular uh, you know velama or this particular ready or you know that type of thing so this is something about financing we mentioned and uh, how does it help as a social capital social capital uh, you know we will uh, not go into detail the definition or anything basically it is a question of having some amount of commonality in terms of objectives and uh, ability to pool resources and then help each other in marketing in terms of failure in terms of uh, you know financing in terms of understanding local regulations for instance uh, uh, i go to us and set up a uh, what you may loosely call a motel and i may not know you know hundreds of regulations are there in terms of parking in terms of zoning in terms of uh, disposal of waste and uh, if i have to hire a, a good uh, lawyer just one second. Hello, I will come back to you. I am in a meeting. Huh? Very sorry. Uh, so it could be uh, local regulations and other. If he has to hire a lawyer or something in US, it will cost him a fortune actually. much easier will be to get in touch with his own uh, people who have set up earlier uh, such motels or they will tell him uh, you know hey, better don't uh, get involved in this don't get involved in that and other in indian context again the same thing the in india they may even say that uh, who which official can be easily bribed and which uh, law can be uh, broken another thing in us also it is there at a different uh, Uh, dimension and level uh, how to follow the zoning restriction or sometime you know i know for instant uh, some uh, gujarati women uh, preparing large you know of uh, lunches and they are giving it to a significant portion of the it employees and almost all is collected on cash basis <coughs> so there is a requirement in terms of understanding the local system local uh, regulation and other thing that also the the group helps it could be you know it could be bowling alley type of a thing in uh, you know as they call it it could be church related for instance uh, we go to the common church and uh, we understand and so there could be different uh, type of uh, for instance uh, when i was told i was surprised actually it appear there are something like 78000 uh, units of uh, hotels in us seven star five star four star three star and that and of that 78 uh, something like 28 is owned by indians not necessarily five star or six star so it could be this uh, motels and uh, which are serving the uh, purpose and uh, very interesting of that 28 good portion 24 or something is uh, by people from uh, in and around surat surtis 
so you can imagine the level of uh, what one can call entrepreneurship and uh, collective uh, thing, uh, which has been helpful to them actually. Many of them bring their cousins, their nephews, and uh, their uh, and it also happens within India actually. For instance, uh, what is uh, called this so-called child labor is not strictly child labor. It's actually, I would say, uh, training of the children. Many of them come from villages, and I know, for instance, in retail trade, I know, in Bangalore, in Chennai, and other places, these boys come, work in the shop. After a couple of years, I find them setting up their own, another one, because of the increase in the area. For instance, uh, Bangalore or Chennai, you know, urban areas are uh, enlarging. Newer suburbs have come and there they go and set up one shop and this is something very interesting same thing i i will tell another example of uh, tirupur of course uh, you should uh, look at the uh, 2002 world bank report because uh, i am professor whatever we shout nobody is going to take it seriously when i say world bank report people will uh, sit up so the 2002 world bank report page 175 they discuss in detail how the Gounder community has organized itself and facilitated the growth of Tirupur. That is one of the largest uh, knitwear export. It is now in the order of some uh, you know, three to four, three, four billions, more than that perhaps. Due to Corona, it has come down, but still it is, uh, they have a huge market in Europe as well as in uh, other parts of the world. I was once uh, traveling. Uh, in uh, Air France from uh, coming and the, one of the person who is owning the uh, thing is he was traveling first class not even business class he was a, he was a regular traveler I was told later um, twice a fortnight or something he travels he wears a dhoti and very simple if you look at him he won't even he was those days running a 1200 crore empire uh, 1200 uh, crore rupee. Now I think it may be easily more, much, much more. So I was talking to him. I asked him jocularly, You only know Tamil. You do not know even English. How do you manage? He told uh, <laughs> Professor in Paris also, people don't know English. <laughs> and then uh, we had a great laugh. He told, uh, You know, finance doesn't require so much of language. It's a uh, and uh, he was telling very interesting thing that time. I'm not, uh, it was uh, maybe in the beginning of this century. A uh, lot of these uh, East European countries market is developing. I told him, are you planning to get into those markets? He was mentioning no. He would uh, encourage his uh, reviews, his other relatives. And this is something very interesting. New markets are not necessarily by the same person. He would rather, you know, uh, get other people also involved in this and other. Other part, point is, if there is a failure, if some businesses uh, doesn't work out, the group uh, comes to your help. They understand. Failure is not looked down upon. Failure is considered as, okay, one of the things which you ought not to have done. Since you have done that, then you have to do differently and other things. So that is a sort of a uh, what one can call uh, uh, social capital, which is uh, facilitating. And uh, this is something very, very interesting. There is another cluster in Tamil Nadu called uh, Sipakasi. There uh, they manufacture this uh, fire, uh, fireworks and uh, they are one of the largest in the world, actually. And uh, in the 20s, actually, their crop failed, 1920s. Two Nadar Aya Nadar and Shanmugan Nadar, they went to Calcutta. In those days, I think some of you may know, Calcutta was the center of uh, business and activities, not Bombay. And so they were normally people go there to get some jobs and uh, they joined this uh, Wimco and uh, they understood something about this uh, matchmaking, you know, making of these uh, matches. They came back and hired some missionary and then they set up a shop and that's how it uh, developed and uh, and seven eight and other families are very largely controlling this uh, activity so many others are also now got into this and from uh, fire 
cracker they expanded into uh, printing because uh, you know you know that it requires huge amount of uh, paper work and and from printing they are one of the you know major printers in uh, india today whenever <laughs> they used people used to say you just see whether any orders have been placed with the swagasi printer to know whether elections are coming or not they will uh, be able to and incidentally i had occasion to see a diary made by them it appears obama uh, collected some 500 of them and specially distributed it among his uh, personal uh, friends and other i had occasion to, of course i can only look at it i can't afford to <laughs> even think of acquiring it i looked at it phenomenally beautifully done uh, uh, diary you know, they have really have a class and uh, they are very well known in terms of uh, business acumen and uh, other is uh, diamond uh, uh, trade in gujarat uh, uh, surat other is uh, sports goods uh, trade now in meerut also it has come up jalandhar so there are so many and the cluster in agra of uh, in terms of this uh, uh, leather and uh, leather and incidentally it's a i would rather use the term vaishyavaisation of india is taking place the whole india is becoming vaishyas the government ought to be kshatriya only and it was in the role of vaishya now it is getting out of uh, the vaishya business and becoming into hopefully uh, kshatriya why i am telling vaishyavaisation there is the dalit chamber of commerce and industry they are very active and they have uh, some uh, dalit uh, business people you know very large number in terms of 500 crore 600 crore uh, turnover come on youtube and so many of them and other thing. till uh, 1980s almost all the government uh, studies of the economic cluster never mentioned about caste or religion very interesting they made it appear as if these economic clusters are swambo you know they came up by themselves and uh, which is not true actually then in late 80s one study talked about uh, muslims are uh, doing uh, uh, business in the uh, leather industry in uh, ambur in tamil nadu as well as in agra and that's how first mention was made about a community in business in india it's a shame actually that we fail to recognize and uh, because of our mulishness or because of our you know, uh, attitude of uh, not recognizing this uh, caste class after that uh, many of the government report also are beginning to talk about uh, the uh, different uh, uh, communities in these uh, type of uh, businesses and of course there are a lot of conflicts also come we will not go into that for instance this halal which is uh, talked about that uh, creates a huge amount of unemployment among cattle hindu who are uh, you know involved in uh, uh, cutting animals because it has to be done in a particular fashion under the maulvi and so that is uh, creating friction between what you may loosely call the listed communities in india and the uh, people who are uh, following islam so what is uh, you know called in the metropolitan paper that uh, you know beam and uh, rahim or uh, actually there is a conflict there because of this issue of halal anyhow we will not get into those uh, uh, major issues basically the clusters are helpful the caste clusters what we mentioned provision of initial capital is also done some amount of funds are given in order to and uh, market access i was mentioning to you intricacies of local laws and regulation law and labor as i told you it is not uh, satyarthi and others can go on telling something he, he claims he has liberated 72647.3 people he has not shown even 100 in any uh, places what he has done is he has uh, to some extent uh, uh, destroyed the carpet industry in up because of his uh, enthusiasm or whatever you may call it which has shifted to uh, turkey iran and bangladesh anyhow it's not child labor it's a training of the children and many of them are not uh, zero education or something 
the highest number of uh, schools and colleges in this country are located in Sivagasi district. Not many people talk about it actually. And whenever Diwali comes, immediately, be, nowadays, of course, it is more about environment, all that. Otherwise, it is child level. It's a standard uh, type of thing. And availability of credit, that is another important thing. And uh, cost pressure minimizes NPA, we mentioned about it. Acceptance of failure. So these are some of the seven, eight uh, things which we should know about clusters. And there are, according to United Nations, there are something like uh, uh, UNIDO. There are something like uh, the 850 clusters in India. And there are some more, 200 to 300, which are not uh, uh, what you may loosely call recognized clusters. Whenever a state government allots land for industry cluster, it is recognized. Central government uh, in their study says uh, roughly of the order of 2040 are there in the form of clusters. And almost, I, I, had, I have not visited 100% of them, but I might have visited easily uh, 50 to 60% of them. And I find almost all these clusters are cost clusters. And does it mean no other cost is uh, involved in this or anything? They were initially facilitated by a cost by their uh, grouping and other thing, which grew. And this uh, economic cluster, as it grew, others also joined. There is absolutely no bar. Uh, it's not something like exclusion or anything. It's a question of who were catalyst in this uh, entire activity. That is the primary thing which uh, we have to be uh, looking at. And uh, most of these were done by ordinary person. This is something very important. It's not something that uh, they had four generations of entrepreneurs or nothing. Many of them are agriculturists, like your uh, Reddies, Kamas, Velamas in Andhra Pradesh, and uh, they in uh, Tamil Nadu, for instance, Gounders and uh, Nadars. <coughs> One can go on enumerating. And uh, most of them are uh, what one loosely call ordinary people, uh, not uh, coming from what one can call uh, with a silver spoon in the mouth, uh, nothing like that. And a very, very uh, sharp and uh, entrepreneurial. And they have done, uh, and they, you know, Patel, Gounders, Ramgadias, Rajus, Naidus, you can go on. Uh, and they have gone into certain areas which are very interesting. For instance, this uh, GVK and GVR, I am sure most of you would have heard about it, for building airports in Istanbul also. They come from agriculture's background, but uh, some of the most sophisticated airports in the country, outside also, are being you know managed by them and built by them. This is something. It's not uh, they get into only areas where they are you know of uh, that uh, lower order or anything like that. No, some of them have gone into significantly and uh, very less formal education. This is something very important. A large appetite for risk taking. I always maintain entrepreneurship cannot be taught in a classroom. It's something which has practiced, that's all. And ability to take risk. And uh, around clusters, colleges have come, schools have come, temples have come, chowdhury. You know the what you may loosely call the extra economic benefits of them is phenomenal. It's not that they just focus on uh, building uh, factories or building. Uh, that's one important point. More important is these uh, developments which are around these. Uh, so what has happened is good amount of investment has been made into all these other activities also. You have a uh, you know car uh, mechanic shops coming. Then you have large portion of uh, restaurants coming up. Then. Um, Members of the cluster want to have good schools. So schools coming up, colleges coming up, then marriage, child trees coming up like that. It's a huge type of uh, developmental activity which is uh, uh, taking place. So this is something which uh, uh, we should not lose sight of or anything. And uh, there is a huge amount of studies done in India 
M. N. Srinivas is one of the dion of that sociologist. He says, if you have reservation, it facilitates one particular person or his family. But business and economics pushes the entire community up. That's something very, very interesting. Business and commerce pushes the, which is true. For instance, uh, our own observation suggests the communities which entered into uh, business and commerce have done much better in life compared to those who entered into politics. I'll give you two examples. The Nadars and Gounders in Tamil Nadu have done remarkably much better than Tevars and Vanir. The other two were always anchoring for preservation, government jobs. and There is a limit to government jobs beyond which it cannot go, actually. Now, actually, it is uh, declining because of the role of government itself is being questioned and other things. This is something very, very uh, interesting to note. So, the communities which gone into business and commerce, the entire community has moved up the ladder, actually, compared to those which are some of the communities in UP and Bihar, their focus has been tremendously on government. And that's what the, you know, the Sarkar uh, Nokri, you know, Sarkar, that is the major, particularly in a state like Bihar, that has become a very, very major point of, uh, you know, desire or aspiration or something. And not in terms of other activities. So, Aggregation is taking place on one side, we mentioned about it, and uh, <coughs> aspiration to have more and more in terms of reservation is not going to facilitate the growth of the entire community. It's very, very important to note. And uh, Emma, the, you know, Dipangar Gupta, another very renowned uh, uh, sociologist from Delhi, he also talks about something very interesting. Uh, what he is telling is, most of the caste which he interacted with, uh, you know, interviewed and other thing, they may be listed as backward, other backward and various things as per government uh, norms. And, but when you talk to them, they never accept they are backward. They say that uh, we are actually most forward. We were the kings. We were the rulers. And uh, over a time period, we have fallen into uh, not so good times and other. And there's something very interesting in this. Uh, Sardar Patel merged something like 560 uh, pre, pre, no, kingdoms. Samasthanams there. Not all of them are big kingdoms. Some of them are Chota uh, one and 560. And all of them are OBC. Some of them are SCST. There were no Brahmin kingdoms or anything. Very interesting when uh, Patel uh, merged it. So one of the sociologists was telling me, India is a very interesting country where the erstwhile rulers have become now backward BCs, backward community and asking for reservation. This is not uh, taken place anywhere else. So there is a, it's a large portion of it, politics also. For instance, 50% was the ceiling uh, by the Supreme Court. A Tamil Nadu introduced 69%. Tamil Nadu case is separate because it has got uh, you know, some 100 years of this uh, thing going on. Not only that, 69% reservation. Practically 91% of the Tamil Nadu population they have declared as backward. Either BC or OBC or MBC or SCST, various categories. In other words, 9% of Tamil Nadu population only is not covered by reservation. So this is something very, very interesting. And uh, this uh, has been going on for quite some time, this uh, what one can call using caste. For instance, commonly it is told by the church people, because of caste, huge amount of conversion has taken place. Which is very funny because I have not come across huge amount of caste problem in Taiwan, South Korea, uh, Thailand, even Japan, or China. None of these countries have massive caste problems. But a uh, significant portion have been converted. Why? So, 
all this reasoning given is funny because uh, the, the it is the dharma of a church to convert. Let's be very clear about it. It, it is their dharma. If they don't do it, they are not following their dharma. They are expected to convert. As much as the dharma of the uh, religion of peace, it is called the other religion, is to uh, you know get the kafirs into proper mould. So the, all these are you know explanation that uh, caste is the reason for this, caste is the reason for that, and other things. I don't think anybody should. And to that extent, I am told now it has come to US also, and uh, you are expected to. Uh, declare or I don't know whether any fourth generation, fifth generation Indian. And uh, first of all, US people themselves, will they understand? Do they know about uh, various uh, uh, tribes of Africa who have come into US? I don't think they can distinguish even between an uh, Indian and a uh, uh, Pakistani and uh, you know, for them everybody is some sort of Asian, vaguely. I don't think they can distinguish between uh, South Koreans and Chinese and uh, I, you know, I shouldn't use the word. They are broadly dumbos. They will not, and now they want one more additional uh, categorization. Yeah, but obviously, this is fueled from people who are from India in order to get some, uh, uh, derive some benefit. And, you know, caste is a stick very easy to beat with. That's all. There is nothing. And many have fallen for it, actually. Very easy also. And we have an uncanny knack of uh, you know, deriding and uh, uh, abusing some of the significant amount of social pillars of our society. Something which is extremely helpful in terms of social capital. We have, uh, I would like to only talk about uh, one important thing. Uh, Swami Vivekananda, he came back from US after giving his uh, famous speech in 1893. I'm sure most of you would have heard about it at least that he did give a speech at Chicago and he became very uh, popular or famous or whatever. And he was giving talk from uh, Colombo to Almora. In those days, Sri Lanka was also part of the larger uh, entity. So he, Jaffna, he gave a speech and uh, Colombo to Almora lectures are very everywhere. And incidentally, everywhere Hindu Samaj or Hindu Sangam or Hindu, they were the ones who were sponsoring his speeches. There was no, you know, uh, in contemporary nowadays, I don't think it will be possible actually. Immediately there will be hue and cry and uh, they will say only Sangam will sponsor his speech, not Hindu Sangam or anything. <laughs> Anyhow, it's a very, he says in Jaffna, address 1897, it is in his collected work. The older I grow, that itself is shocking to me because he passed away when he was 38 plus. If he is talking about older, I don't understand. People like me, we are actually in the next birth only. Anyhow, the older I go, the better I seem to think of these caste and such other time-honored institution of India. There is a time when I used to think that many of them were useless and worthless. And uh, older I grow, more I seem to feel in cursing any one of them. I feel diffidence in cursing any of them. Each one of them is embodiment of experience of centuries. So let us not try to. And uh, last but not least is people who want to create caste of society do not understand. The next major identity will be only the religious identity. And uh, that is uh, going to be a much more uh, fascinating thing, I would say. To have something like 120 crore people having a single identity. The multiple identities is the uh, uh, sure guarantor of uh, peace and uh, tolerance and uh, diversity. And uh, we are used to multiple identities. It's nothing new about it or anything for thousands of years, actually. Language, uh, caste, subcaste, sub subcaste, region, uh, nearby rivers, so many type of... Uh, so I don't think there is uh, any need to move for a single identity or anything like that. And the larger the number of uh, caste, larger the sampradayas, uh, the greater is our uh, variety. Greater is our... We are losing huge amount of uh, our traditional, for instance, in terms of food preparation, in terms of dress, 
uh, usage and they are slowly becoming one size fit all type of a thing, which is a very, very, uh, you know, uh, uh, unacceptable thing for our type of a culture and other thing. Anyhow, that's a important point to uh, remember. So as of today, cost mean immediately in terms of, uh, you know, some reservation in this. Uh, and uh, that is not the be all and end all, actually. And uh, as I told you, the whole country Vaishwaisation is taking place. So the more and more, uh, now what is called the unicorns in the contemporary jargon are coming up, entrepreneurship is coming up and technology is taking over the world uh, like anything. It's not the... Uh, so we are still debating 19th century philosophies in the implemented in 20th century and failed like socialism, capitalism, public sector, private sector, all these are gone actually. We are still, you know, uh, you know, what do you call, losing our uh, patience and uh, interest in these things. But the way in which uh, technology is trying to uh, enter into our lives, already it has entered significantly. And uh, the way in which various uh, changes are taking place in the world, we should actually uh, look at it, keep our diversity. This is the major and uh, light-heartedly, I always say, uh, divided we stand, united we fall. This is very important. Divided not in a derivative, you know, derogatory sense, but in the sense of having the multiplicity of flowers, let them bloom. So that is our major uh, Once you try to Abrahamize or once you try to, you know, make it into a, a single uh, salad type of thing, like I call them desert cults, that's not going to uh, help us. We are, you know, hundreds of, uh, uh, you know, flowers in a Beautiful garden. Let's uh, not uh, try to make it into, you know, rose garden only or anything like that. That way we would say. So this is something very uh, important. And I thank uh, Anjali for providing this uh, opportunity. I'm sure uh, a couple of people who have been listening might have uh, also you know, understand. There is the one Sunil Agarwal has asked something about... Uh, caste categorization in Muslim. Yeah, all of them follow. There are Muslims as many castes are there as in India. You just look at the matrimonial page of uh, Indian newspaper, even in English or in Hindi, you will find, right, Christian Nadars, uh, Christian Tevas, uh, you know, um, Ashrafs are only preferred. That will come very clearly. They won't prefer Ansaris. And... So there is a how followers of this religion attached to they are same thing like uh, for instance in Pakistan as much caste as in India it's a sort of a Xerox copy only and uh, everybody will talk there is casteless and uh, well, nobody takes it seriously actually anyone who has come into contact with the Indian subcontinent over a longer period of time have the same in six of course there are uh, you know, as many caste and uh, currently elections are going to come. They are talking about Jat Six and uh, uh, you know, uh, Dalit Six and all these things. Aggregation is there, of course, in all these, as I told you. So there is no uh, uh, what one can call. So this uh, isn't celebrating what is that? Do we have to celebrate our Hindu seers using the Western? Yeah, that is correct. Most of the people, you know, all these, uh, what uh, I would rather call the blurb writers are all trained in the Western tradition. So they have to use the thing, you know, like the, we, we give an example that he is like Walter, he is like, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, what do you call uh, uh, this uh, Washington, he is like uh, this and uh, you know, that's what we, we never, we rarely say he's like Vivekananda or he's like, uh, you know, uh, Aravindo or, you know, those type of things, right? And uh, he says, somebody is, Abhinidha says that uh, we should publicize the knowledge and disseminate and, uh, 
that's not going to help let me you know it will it's a good thing to do this but uh, you know there are you know dead uh, weights large number of uh, people of relatively higher caliber quote and quote education i have interacted in us and see the social science uh, groups are all full of uh, you know completely uh, with uh, you know people who are you know having their own ideas and uh, they have got their own groupings and uh, they are never going to accept any alternate point of view if i say caste is a social capital they will throw me out actually of that uh, anything positive about caste cannot be told so that's a it's a huge ecosystem which has been created over the last 40 50 years either you are part of it or you are out i am i hope i am making myself clear can people re embracing create a caste yeah yeah quite a number of these uh, groupings of for instance jayadeva along with him huge number of people from south mood if you go near purulia today there is <laughs> there is a large cluster of ayangars who are settled near purulia who is uh, who are not very much having any contact with the tamil nadu or anything but uh, they are uh, known in uh, purulia they speak bengali only uh, they have got their own uh, uh, new caste system actually so over a period of time large number of caste have uh, disappeared a large number of new caste have come i am sure after uh, 15 years you will find or uh, uh, 20 years maybe uh, you know because there is an intercaste uh, marriage taking place not very interesting more intercaste marriage between uh, regions than within region i find you know somebody from bombay because of the metropolitan towns and because of the white collar jobs and other thing uh, bombay uh, man is getting married to a girl in hyderabad both of them are relatively uh, well educated well settled and this is again very interesting mostly you know there is some sort of a you know vegetarians who tend to go along with i would say the upper caste are more or less now blending much more compared to the other obc and other thing i am sure over the period of 30 40 years uh, you know the caste uh, you know of uh, up and uh, uh, brahmins of the south uh, this uh, new caste will come actually they will call you know you will call it by some name there is nothing uh, uh, new about it you read dipangar gupta he says many caste have disappeared over a period of time and many new caste have also come so over comes into and you see it's a self declaration again and again i am telling there is nothing even being a hindu my uh, good colleague unfortunately passed away he used to ask me uh, how do i become hindu i told nothing you just declare yourself hindu that's all <laughs> what do i do he say i told him sit before your uh, laptop and type that i am a hindu that's all <laughs> he was laughing at me you mean i don't you don't require anything else. who is to tell you are not a hindu you tell me you can be hindu you can do you know basically couple of things are expected out of you you accept the authority of the vedas that is something and uh, normally you don't take uh, cow meat jana you know again you know, and uh, you need not believe in god also in within hinduism there is a a uh, group which is uh, actually the gnostics gnostic originally meant those who don't accept the authority of vedas but uh, popularly you can be and uh, you can be a veg or a non veg you can be you can uh, take liquor not take liquor there is nothing you know so you can be uh, you have to believe in the law of rebirth law of karma these are some of the ingrained beliefs only so you can declare that you are a hindu no nobody can say you are not a hindu how can anyone say who has got that authority to uh, say that you are not actually or you can join some sect or groups like uh, iskon like swami narayan you know there are plenty of these groups you can join and uh, that's also nothing and that's not a must so that's the way in which it is uh, 
So the cost of your road you can uh, create over a period of time. Of course, it takes a lot of time to uh, get into this thing. So thank you, Dr. Vaidyanthan. Like one more time, I know many um, non-Indians uh, are embracing Sanatan Dharma, and I also get this question. So uh, I am afraid I don't agree with caste system. You don't have to agree, sir. No, no problem. We Hindus in South Africa don't have a caste. Art, I don't agree. I'm not, uh, that's not uh, true actually. PM applaud at PM will applaud. That's a different issue. South Africa also, there are Naidus, there are uh, uh, various original settlers I'm talking about. So there is a good amount of differences. In other okay. Anyhow, if you don't agree with caste system, nothing, no harm. Caste system is not going to, uh, you know, get angry or anything, right? Any, anything else? Thank you, Anjali. Thank you. Thank you. I know, time. but can we do one last thing? I have a burning question. I mean, with, with Pota, which is pulling out of thin air and an ancient, um, you know, like data from a long time ago, what is the way forward in terms of policy implications and reservations? Like, I just want to get a, a macro perspective from you, sir, and then we can close out. Come again? With uh, with data that is uh, that is not recent by any means, and data that you also said might just bunk them, right? I mean, it's pulled out of thin air. How does that matter for uh, policy making when, especially in terms of reservations? What do you see the you way see, forward? Uh, yes, this uh, this whole reservation is you know going away. I can tell you by itself. You know, you know, the causes of success is the reason for failure time. Uh, unless government announces a reservation in private sector, which I don't think is going to, not going to be easy. For the simple reason, in another book I have explained, 80% of our thing is partnership proprietorship firms. So it's not very easy to bring in reservation there. If, if you have a, you can't say 10, out of 10 partners, two should be this and anyhow, so that's not going to. And the role of government is becoming less and less. You know, they are withdrawing from many of the activities themselves, actually. And uh, you see, now it's a, whether you like it or not, global corporates are playing a much bigger role. That is why they are trying to bring in this caste issue in US itself. They want, you know, over a period of time, whether uh, H-1B visa can be issued to some uh, uh, OBC more and uh, less to, it's not, I am, I don't think it's going to uh, work very easily. And some small groups are here and there, and there are enough, uh, what you may, liberals in US who are uh, suddenly who will get enthusiasm about these things. And they will say that, uh, the, that's all. There is, per se, uh, this uh, whole reservation thing is, uh, uh, not uh, going anywhere. In schools, for instance, government schools only, reservation is there. Huge number of private uh, schools have come, and there is a clamor among people to put their children in private school, including the government bureaucrats. How many government bureaucrats put their children in government schools? You tell me. No. And uh, similarly, you know, government hospitals, when a politician falls sick, he doesn't get into government hospital. So these are, you know, I would say some of these are, you know, uh, colonial hangover actually. And uh, for that, uh, some other time we will discuss. Yes. The entire caste division was encouraged by the British in the South, just like they did the uh, Hindu Muslim thing in the North. Yes. 1920, the Justice Party was actually baptized and that was encouraged by the British. And they were actually terrible to start with. You know that Jalenwala bag took place in 1990, in April 13. Thousands of innocent people were killed. The original founders of Justice Party wrote article justifying general death action. And that was not published popularly in uh, Tamil Nadu or other places. Because uh, obviously many of the press people were not enthusiastic. It was published in London. 
and uh, propagated that these are the liberal leaders of india who are uh, telling this and uh, later on they formed the justice party and other i am just wanting to give you the background and uh, south indian liberal federation then they became a caste finally now it is called dmk it's all same so the caste issue is uh, you know partly i would say significantly also due to the british uh, Uh, playing the role of uh, divide and rule within the southern part of the uh, country uh, you know according to me what is happening now during the political uh, uh, movement same thing happened almost all the what you may loosely call uh, upper caste were uh, in every state were uh, joining and then slowly the Gandhi came and he mobilized all the peasantry and other thing much later. So similarly now, what is happening because of the metropolitan development, urbanization, blow, a large number of these uh, girls and uh, boys from, uh, you know, what we may loosely call south and north, east and west, all of them are now getting married to each other. Recently, you know, I can tell you, I have come across so many of my own students, you know, who are. Uh, first name will be uh, some kaur she and she has married a tamilian or uh, she will be a tamilian who has married a maharashtrian you know it's a and this group is not small unfortunately we don't have any proper data on them if you look at it last uh, 25 years i would say definitely it's a huge group which has come out which is uh, i would not say uh, less of inter religious more of uh, and is not intercaste within a uh, state it is uh, between uh, states a lot of gujarati girls marathi girls you know marrying outside so this is going on so this will also minimize the uh, the cause of reservation and other so the growth of private schooling one and a significant amount of reduction in government uh, Uh, you know role in the business and the global enterprises coming in so many of the global enterprises will not be very enthusiastic to go for this uh, even though they may do some lip service or something they because they would uh, you know if you ask uh, tesla he will want people who will produce good results for him he is not for so and i am sure you will agree with me most of the mnc's are not for social justice or anything like that they just want to do good outcome and uh, benefit their shareholders period so this noises will be there according to me new caste will emerge and uh, and uh, system itself i don't think will go away not in the next 52 <laughs> uh 60 year not definitely uh, not in my life of course and uh, much more than that uh, that is what i am expecting and uh, for politics it will be used for some more time to come mm -hmm. right okay thank you sir um, this was enlightening and supremely accessible right we could all relate understand so thank you for talking to us about this very important issue which has been blown out of proportion everywhere Uh, caste system and casteism definitely nobody is justifying any caste discrimination or anything nobody can justify also for that matter right so professor vedanathan i have a question uh, yeah. this is this is mayank shekhar from rale north carolina yeah In from the, the triangle yes research triangle part <laughs> i see that smile ha huh? ha huh? <laughs> i saw that smile on your face yeah yeah <laughs> so i have seen it all ah yani yeah yes, you have now you came to nc state for a talk arin chaudhary yeah. you was saripalli i was there oh very good right um the in the beginning you were talking about the first census 1881 i believe you said where 1995 castes were identified 
So, uh, and at that time, you uh, you also referenced uh, a commissioner who said that uh, they have four castes, right? And they were trying to map the Indian caste into the Indian finding from the Indian caste system into those four castes. Yeah. Don't you think that the uh, the Indian Jati system that we know of, it is not appropriate to map that as a caste system? Yeah, yeah. The, you see, the Britishers were not caring anything about your past or they just wanted to uh, create a uh, division on the basis of which they would, uh, you know, they can hire some people to work with, uh, with them and. Uh, See, their job was not uh, sociology or anything like that. Their right. job was simply to how to run the country. And they, the, for instance, they created the so-called, uh, uh, what you may loosely call, the Fauji groups, you know. They right. identified some people that you are this uh, military man. They identified some people, they told you are not military type. <laughs> yeah. Then uh, they identified some people, told you are criminal type. You are, you know, any anything stolen from any location, your house will be raided. So their job was, they wanted to, you know, uh, have a good rule in this country. That's all. So will we benefit from con continuing to call it Jati uh, caste system or should we internally or as Indians, we should call it? Ideally, one can go back. But it's not, all these are, you know, very difficult to reverse. Uh, which has taken, you know, now re nearly 100 years, actually. Right. So, so the caste, caste itself is a Portuguese, uh, not our terminology at all. But right. uh, not very easy to uh, get back to many of these things. Okay. Because Though the, ideally one can yeah. uh, wish caste for it. It doesn't happen. Right, right. Caste system does not have mobility, right? Where Jati has mobility. Yeah. yeah there are so, so many differences that it, it doesn't serve right. Easy to gel. Yes, it doesn't gel, right. Okay. Thank you okay, very much. I know. Thank you for participating, everyone. And thank you, Vedinathanji. Hopefully, we'll thank see you, you again. Thank you very much, yes. for your uh, kind uh, introduction as well as. Uh, cooperation and courtesies and also you are uh, uh, assistant who is helping you yes and technical support and, uh, thank other who have attended the session thank you absolutely very much. and this have is available on youtube also so have yeah i mean we recorded this yeah have a good sunday yes uh, no, have a good uh, uh, maybe now lunch time right uh, close <laughs> nearing all uh, right close, yeah yeah. Then I used okay. to go to a temple nearby. They used to provide nice curd rice and all that thing for a very reasonable price in those days. Actually, mm -hmm. I would say two two dollar or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I used to take one box and then bring it for the night also. So the temples used to, you know, uh, do a very great service. I would say definitely. Yes. I think even now it may be continuing, right? Even even they have in, in COVID times too. Yes. Yeah. And plus this ISKCON people used to give free. There they still no... do. They oh. still do. And they say whatever you want to donate, donate. Otherwise also it is fine. Correct. So they, they sometimes they used to keep this uh, moving man, you know, like uh, and then uh, distribute. Yes. Very great thing. Good thing. Good thing. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Thank sir. Thank you very much. Good night day. to you. Shubhratri. Haji. Have a nice, okay. uh, Bye. Thank you, Anjali. Yeah. Okay. So I'm leaving. Thank you. <laughs>